Right, West is dealer. They are not vulnerable, and North South are vulnerable. And West has got 10, 12 points. Just about an opening bid. This Singleton Queen I'm not particularly thrilled about, but 12 points is an opening bid. Um, playing standard American yellow card, you'd be playing five card majors. So opening one heart here looks standard. As it happens in almost all systems here, you'd be opening one heart. But the good thing about the American system is that when you open one heart or one spade, it's five cards in the major. So we're going to open one heart. Our plan is, if our partner doesn't agree with hearts, we can then bid two diamonds, showing a five and a four. Um, depends what happens, the opponents might overcall in clubs or something. But our plan is to open hearts and then bid diamonds next. But of course we need to wait to see what happens. But now, we're starting with one heart. Okay, now to North. North is looking to overcall over one heart, and North will not be overcalling over one heart. They have a dreadful hand. Uh, three points, no long suit. They haven't got a six card suit to do a weak jump overcall, or, or, or a normal five card suit to do a normal overcall. Nothing to be said here, but pass. Okay, now to East, responding to their partner's one heart. Okay. So East has got a magnificent hand, especially as a responder. They have got, let me, hang on, let me catch you up, 8, 12, 16, 19 points, uh, responding to one heart. The unfortunate thing is they haven't got a heart fit. So they're bidding in response to one heart. We would like a heart fit, then we could do some kind of Jacoby Tuno trumps or look for a heart slam, but we haven't got a fit yet. We need our partners to have six hearts or four spades or something to find a fit. So there's no reason to rush right now and jump to three no trumps or jump to four no trumps or anything like that. We can do a nice simple response of a new suit. And if we bid a new suit, it will be forcing for at least one round. At the one level, it's forcing for one round. At the two level, it will be forcing to game, playing standard American yellow card. But we can just bid one spade, it's six or more points, four or more spades, no rush at this stage. We will be looking for greater things in a minute though, but we need to find our fit first if we indeed we have a fit. So one spade for now. Okay, now to South. As suspected, South has got nothing really to say. They haven't got a long suit, they haven't got a good hand, they can't double, can't bid no trumps, anything like that. South's got a nice, straightforward pass. So East West are passing now throughout. They've got both got hands that aren't going to be bidding anything, so now it's just a North South only auction. It's a uh, South three bid. We're wondering what, what they're going to bid again. Um, the only thing I think they want to bid here is to bid their diamonds. Our plan was to bid a five and a four, so that's what we're going to do. Um, some temptation to support the spades. When you've got three for your partner's suit, it's look tempting to support the spades, but we don't know they've got five spades necessarily, so therefore we should be bidding our five and four. If our partner does have five spades, they should look for a fit themselves by either bidding spades again, which would promise six, or bidding fourth suit forcing, looking for us to have a spade fit. So our correct bid here is our original plan, which is a bit two diamonds. Okay, slightly dissatisfactory uh, continuation from our partner there. They've shown us five hearts and four diamonds. Um, we have a problem with that, really, because we're not finding a fit. It looks like we've got a mismatch. Our partner hasn't got four spades. They haven't got six hearts, presumably, because they would have bid hearts twice. They've got four cards in the suit we don't want. Um, so we've got a choice now. We could take it nice and straightforward and just bid three no trumps and have a nice easy life. Twelve points opposite 19 will be an easy peasy three no trumps. The alternative is to be more optimistic and to look for six no trumps. If we were to bid four no trumps, that would be Roman key card, and it would be on the assumption that diamonds are trumps. So that would be misleading to our partner. So the way we could look for six no trumps is twofold. One would be shut our eyes and bid six no trumps, which would be a bit wild for me, because they've only got 12 points over there necessarily. We've only got 19, which is 31, which is not necessarily enough for six no trumps. The alternative is to bid three clubs as fourth suit forcing to see what we do and see what our partner's got to see if maybe they've got 5-5 five, five to look for a diamond fit or if they've got 6 hearts. I suspect they haven't got 6 hearts because they should bid uh, hearts twice if they have. I think four suit forcing is a good idea just because it keeps the bidding going, it makes our partner bid something. Um, we know 3 no trumps is a safe contract, I'm just not quite ready to give up yet on the, on the dream of making a slam if indeed they have got a 5 and a 5 or, so, or something that we didn't know about. So I'm going to try 3 clubs, but my slam aspirations are diminishing rapidly with the fact that they've got a 5 and a 4 in the wrong suits. To make a no trump slam you need more points, we haven't really got quite enough points to, to just punt 6 no trumps. I'm going to try 4 suit forcing, but I may well end up just shrugging and bidding an easy 3 no trumps given that we haven't found a fit. 4 suit forcing for now, just to check. Okay, partners just bid four suit forcing. First important thing is you must alert an artificial bid, so you must let the opponents know that that three club bid is not necessarily natural. It purely says, tell me more. I've got a good hand, I want to go to game, 
I'm fishing for a fit, or they're fishing for a slam, or they're looking for a club stopper and no trumps. They're looking for something. Um, so with four suit forcing, what you try and do as the opener is you try and give more information if you can. We've got a five and a four, which we've told them about. So if we had a five and a five, we could bid diamonds again. If we had a six and a four, we could bid hearts again, albeit I think we would have bid hearts twice if we had six. Um, if we had a club stopper, we could bid no trumps, but we don't have that either. What we do have is three cards in their initial suit. So that is the thing we're going to be showing here. We're going to be bidding our third suit, spades, which shows therefore a five, four, three. The idea being, we're trying to catch the possibility of a 5-3 spade fit. Our partner could have 5 spades, and our 3 spades could make a fit. Of course, they might only have 4 spades, and maybe they were looking for a club stopper. We'll find out with their next bid. But for now, I'm going to bid 3 spades, which shows a 5-4-3 shape, and therefore, we must only have 1 club. 5-4-3 and 1. Okay, that is probably the third bit of disappointing information from our partner over there. We now know they've got 5 hearts, 4 diamonds, 3 spades, and therefore 1 club. We do not have a spade fit, we don't have a heart fit, we don't have a club fit, and we don't have a diamond fit. So, that means that if we are to make a slam here, we need the prerequisite of 33 for 6 NT. We want 33 points or more to be making 6 no trumps because we do not have a fit. Um, and we don't have 33 points. It is a possibility if our partner is right at the top of their range, if they've got kind of 14, 15-ish. We know they've probably not got 16 because they would have done a jump earlier or something. Um, so... I think I'm going to end up just bidding three no trumps and taking the safe game. Um, we could still just punt six no trumps, but it's unlikely to, to yield results because we haven't quite got sufficient points. We may end up making 12 tricks, but it's not something... You don't want to be bidding a slam that is dodgy. Um, again, if we bid four no trumps, our partner's going to assume spades are trumps, and we're going to end up in six no trumps whether we like it or not. So I think the correct bid here is to bid three no trumps and take the safe game. Okay, leading against three no trumps. Um, the normal thing to do is to lead fourth down of your longest and strongest. Um, we have got a lot of info from the opponents here that the dummy is five hearts, four diamonds, three spades, one club. Um, and we know the opponents, uh, the declarer has got some spades in their hand, but not five, otherwise they would have gone back to spades. Um, so we're choosing between hearts and clubs, basically. I wouldn't lead a heart because hearts, there's five of them in the dummy, so therefore I'd be leading a club. You could lead the five of clubs, but as it happens, we've got a little run here, 10, 9, 8. So if ever you've got three in a run like this against no trumps, the correct card is the top of the sequence. This sequence isn't brilliant, don't get me wrong, but it's the correct card to lead the 10. I'm choosing clubs over hearts because hearts were bid here. Um, and clubs, we know there's only one there. So I'll be leading top of the sequence, 10 of clubs. Okay, down goes the dummy, the 5, 4, 3, 1, as we know. Okay. So, ten of clubs led. Not surprising that the opponents have chosen to lead the unbid suit, but as it happens, we've got these well and truly stopped. Um, in no trumps, the normal plan you want to take here is to count your top tricks, see what tricks you've definitely got, and then see where you might get extra tricks from. Uh, so, going from left to right in, in my hand, we've got no top tricks in spades. We've got to get rid of the ace first before we win any spades. We've got three top tricks in hearts, ace, king, queen. We've got four top tricks in clubs, all the top four. So that's seven. We've got two top tricks in diamonds. So that's three plus four plus two is nine. So we have nine tricks already with extra tricks possibly coming from either the heart suit, if they break, we might be able to make length tricks in hearts, or the spade suit. We could maybe get an extra trick or two from spades, depending on where the ace is, depending on where the jack is, etc. Um, the most attractive prospect is the heart suit. We've got five hearts opposite two. If after the ace, the king, and the queen, we've managed to see that the hearts are broken three and three, or the jack and ten have fallen, all of our hearts will be winners. So we could easily have two extra tricks there. We also could have extra tricks through the spades. The spades are less long and less strong, so they're less attractive to go for the spades, but there is a possibility in spades as well. Um, so the plan here is going to be win the queen of clubs, cross the heart and uh, test the hearts, and then if the hearts don't work, maybe end up testing the spades later. For now, we're going to win the queen of clubs, which holds, because we've got the ace, the king and the jack. Uh, so that's the, the first trick, the trick we always knew we had. Now I want to test the heart, so I want to play a heart to the ace and a heart back to the king and then the queen to see if they break. So, blow heart, blow heart to the ace. Okay. So that's four hearts gone. Always be counting the suit you're interested in. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are four left. Heart to the king or queen, doesn't matter. The 10 drops, that's suspicious, gets the feeling they might not be breaking, but of course they could have the jack left there. 
So now that's eight hearts gone, nine, ten, eleven. So what we want is when we play the queen, the other two hearts will appear, which will make our last two hearts on the dummy a winner. So let's try. Queen of hearts, and this hand unfortunately throws something away. What they discard doesn't really matter. They probably should hold on to their spades because they know Declarer has spades in their hand. So they'll be throwing a diamond or a club. The club looks completely disinteresting, so I'd be throwing a club. We want to throw something away that doesn't look very interesting, small diamond. We might end up coming on these spades in a second. We might end up coming to them by through length eventually. These clubs are all winners, of course, so I'll be throwing a small diamond. And we get the bad news. The bad news that the hearts are broken badly. So what we can do now is twofold. We have two different options. One is give up on the hearts and play spades and see how the spades work. Play a spade to the ten, finessing the jack, that kind of jazz. Or we could play a heart giving them the jack of hearts and then setting up this heart as a definite winner later. Two options. Um, I think playing the heart is the correct thing. Give them the jack of hearts. Yes, we'll lose the ace of spades, but then we'll have a heart winner for sure. So, give them the heart. They didn't break the way we wanted, but doesn't matter. This hand discards another club, because they're disinterested in clubs. We throw something away. We can throw a spade away now, because we've got the ace, king of diamonds, and all these are winners. So they're all winners there. So we throw a small spade. This hand wins the jack, as we knew. Now what they play next doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, they've basically got the ace of spades coming and that's it, but we, uh, we, we, we need to assume that they don't know that necessarily. They might play another club or they might try a diamond trick, but you know it doesn't really matter now. They're going to win the ace of spades only. Um, so let's say they try diamonds or clubs. doesn't really matter what they do. Let's say the jack of diamonds. We can win the ace of diamonds in hand. In fact, no, sorry, hang on, let me think about this. No, we need to win the king of diamonds to make sure we're in the right place to win that eight of hearts. See, it's easy to be... Easy to make a small mistake if you're not paying attention. So win that diamond, like so. The king of diamonds wins. And now we cash that eight of hearts, having cleared the heart suit. Uh, they throw something away, it doesn't matter what they do. We throw a spade away. They throw something away, a club, let's say. We worked hard for that long heart trick, but we eventually got there. Now the only thing left is to get rid of the ace of spades. The king of spades or the queen of spades is going to win one and the other one is going to lose to the ace. So let's say you leave the queen, doesn't really matter what you do because they're only ever going to win their ace. Let's say that. They take their ace of spades. If they don't take their ace, by the way, you just end up winning these and give them this one at the end anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So they win the ace of spades. And now we've got the rest. Whatever they lead, we're going to win this one, this one, and all of these. These are all winners. If we'd had chosen to play on spades earlier, the spades were three and three, and the jack was in the right place. So the finesse in spades would have worked, and the spades would have broken, so we would have made extra tricks. So we potentially could have got to twelve. We would come to three hearts, four clubs is seven, two diamonds is nine, and three spades is twelve. So if we had played on the spades, because of how perfectly positioned the spades are, jack to three and ace to three, we may well have made twelve, but hearts was our better bet. So we have come to eleven, we've played the correct odds, albeit spades would have worked. So we lost just two tricks, we lost the heart setting the heart trick up, and we lost the ace of spades for eleven tricks.